let me introduce to you the new four-wheel drive off-road wrecker it's only one problem it's, it's not mine it's it's ben's so ben just bought this yesterday and i got a call for a rolled over excavator yesterday so we're putting it work today i did call you and say you should buy this let's talk about this <laughs> so here's what happened with this truck ben sent me a picture of this truck and said you should buy this I was not in a position to buy this because I just spent all my money on this. Maybe not the best business decision, but it's what I did. So I couldn't buy this. So Ben goes, well, if you're not going to buy it, I'm going to go buy it. So Ben drove over yesterday and bought this. And while he was over there buying it, I got a call for a rolled over excavator. So uh, I said, let me know if it makes it home because it's going to work the next day. <laughs> So this could work out even better where I didn't even have to buy it. I was just gonna say. But I still get to use it. This is the best case scenario. <laughs> yeah, this, this works out really it, well it for me. Come. So this is a what, 88? 88 Ford F350 four wheel drive, uh, 7.3 IDI diesel. And it's got a uh, Challenger bed on it. Twin line boom, dual, what are those are 10s? 15s. 15s, dual 15s on the back and a 15 on the front. Correct. Uh, got wheel lift on the back, got the sling with it, came with the dollies, came fully loaded with the fork receivers, jacks, straps, jumper cables, like 100% ready to work, and it's even my colors. I am so jealous that I didn't get to buy this. But it's okay, because I still get to use it. I'm like, I don't even know why you're jealous at this point. It's the best, it is literally the best case scenario for you. <laughs> oh, and by the way. Alex is here. Back again. So, uh, like I said, we got a call for a rolled over excavator, so we are gonna uh, load up, head over to uh, see if we can get it stood back up. All right, here's all the signs that say private road, no trespassing, turn around, and all that good stuff, so we must be in the right place. I see a sleepy excavator. It's taking a nap. Yeah. Instead of cow tipping, it's an uh, excavator tip. And they rolled it uphill. So jealous right now. That thing even just looks good going down the road. Like in the mirror, it just looks cool. I and will tell you, and I'm not like sales pitch on it to you or nothing like oh that. Oh no, the salesman would never do that. Oh no, but like, easy, easy. But it drives really good for what it is. You want to make $1,500 profit right now. Okay. He said, okay, you heard it, right? I always want to make $1,500 profit, but not, not on this. So this rock was just a little too heavy for it. Uh, luckily we got some room over there to put the, the wrecker. And uh, amazingly, the cab didn't hit the ground. It's going to have some fiberglass damage on the, on the body there, but the cab is totally fine. Uh, one window popped out completely, but didn't break. So all the glass is fine. So the expensive part is, is good. It's just some fiberglass, stand it back up. Mechanic will come take a look at it and go over all the fluids and, and go back to work. I don't see any nails or anything in here. So should be good. So we're gonna put the record down there. We can boom up. I'm so jealous of that truck. So the wreck will go down there where you can boom up. One line's gonna go low to the wheel lift and then up to our uh, pull point we have up here. The other will go over the top to the boom so we can pull it down into the ground to bite in and then pulling off the boom to stand it up. Then my Jeep will go up there and be the brake to let it down easy so it doesn't slam down and knock any glass out or anything like that. That truck just looks cool. It's a pretty nice truck. Yeah. Especially the paint on it. I know. He goes and buys a truck my colors. <laughs> he did it for you. Hard that way. Good thing the arm rolled the tires. <laughs> That's all the steering. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't
So what's the plan? So we are going to snap block down with the low line because it's a I doubt this will do it, but sometimes if you're just trying to pull to stand it up, it'll just slide the machine or the vehicle, whatever. But by having a line go down low and up to it, you're pulling down on it, which bites that low side in to help it grip while the high line pulls it over. Okay. I just realized something. You, Alex, who's holding the camera behind you guys, he's in the Marine Corps in the heavy equipment division. So this is like your wheelhouse. Yeah, I mean, it's so, a lot smaller. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I operated. I didn't unflip them and fix them. So you never flipped one? Nope. Almost. A couple, couple times. But you should try harder. <laughs> I wasn't trying to get a ninja punched. Yeah. Okay. I mean, also my skill, you know, pretty good. So that's going to be, by doing this, we're spreading the weight out across this track. We could hook that cable straight to it, but then we'd just like cutting into the track. We don't want to do that. I think we can grab the boom up here. We'll miss all the hydraulic lines if we go right here. So we will use, yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna throw some buffer material in there. Same thing, the cable is gonna be going over the track until it starts to stand up. So we're gonna put this under the cable so we don't hurt the track. Sure got a lot of straps and ropes. You'll never have enough, no matter what you that bring. Boom is, uh, kind of a clutch piece. Yes. Pretty rad. I didn't realize it was that high. Oh, it goes a lot higher than that. I'm not. I'm not all the way up, or even close to all the way out. I know it's not all the way out. I didn't know it was all the way up. Okay, so I'm gonna set the Jeep up over here. Get it hooked up with the Yankum rope. That way, I can just run the truck. And that rope will do the catching and slowing everything down totally on its own. I'll just put the Jeep in four low, locked up, and it'll just drag it to me and stretch with the rope. Yeah. All right, no knots. No knots. Back there. Do you want tension on it on this end? Just just back up a little. You actually do want it to drag the Jeep a little. That's just so I want it to start to get tight as it's like a third almost, of the way, like two yeah. thirds of the way up. And then just kind of gently pull on the Jeep. And then the rope, give it some stretch, should help in the Jeep. It can drag the Jeep. Right, fine. right, in the yeah. soft dirt, yep. yeah. All right, so we got the Jeep in four low, in gear. A rough estimate of how much slack I need for that rope to start to get tight as this comes up, and let's see what happens. All right. All right. Live here, please. Now we're talking. Yes, I want. 
want it to do that. Yeah, especially with the boom up so high, there is a risk of when it comes over just going yeah, I like over. It. Pretty dialed. I just didn't know you had enough force to pull that baby. Yeah, those are 15,000. Each, each yeah. winch is 15. That's nice. Now we gotta get our stuff back from up there. <laughs> So dusty. <laughs> so dusty. It went from nice red to dusty red. Yeah. Now this is why I carry like five tree savers and a million shackles and soft shackles is you never know what you're gonna do. Yeah, need. I had no idea you had this many straps in this Jeep. I have a lot of gear in this Jeep. I like the setup though with the with the two step. And and you wanna know a fun fact? I didn't even pull all the bins out. There's more. There are more. There's more in there. Look at more <laughs> snatch block shackles, bends. There's a synthetic line extension ahead of that. There's there's a lot in here. Yank them ropes. Yes. That rope worked really good as the cushion. I, I pulled it a little too tight, but I'd rather it have been a little too tight and I just had to drag the Jeep to get the rest of the way over than it'd be too loose and have that excavator slam down. So it was okay. That's why I used the Yankum rope is it gave it the cushion so that it would stretch and move. So even if it started to go before the rope pulled tight, it would like cushion the landing at least. So there's a lot more uses for these ropes than just pulling trucks and just stuff. a yank out recovery. They're very versatile if you just think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, just gotta use a little imagination. I threw the box away a long time ago. Well, that is that. The excavator stood back upright. Uh, the rental company is going to send out a mechanic Monday morning to go over it, go through the fluids, make sure all that before it gets fired back up. Yes, you could check the fluids, let it drain out, and start it up if it was your machine and run it. It'd be fine. But when it's a rental machine, their policy is a mechanic goes over anything that tips over before it gets started. That way, if there is any other problem, yeah, we start it back up, it goes back to work, and then on the next customer, something goes out and it blows up. Well, whose fault is it? So, I'm talking. <laughs> All he's talking about is lunch over there. But anyway, yeah, so that it's the rental company policy to check it completely over by one of their mechanics before it gets fired back up, just so that there's not a chance of someone else getting blamed for damage problems that uh, were missed from this incident. That thing, other than some fiberglass, looks great. Mechanic will check it out and make sure. We'll get back to work. Sounds like we, according to Mr. Ben over there, we're going to lunch. So that'll be it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for filming. Yes, sir. Thank Ben for letting me borrow his truck. We'll see you guys later.